I tour at Eric Bodox right now and Regina's, and uh, they have very impressive fish rooms. And there's something that really cool happened. Regina's in the background. Um, something really cool that happened is they have Whiptail Arium. Arium? That's how you say it, Arium. And uh, it's just really cool. They just spawned. And so we're actually, I'm going to get Regina on camera. And she's going to kind of tell us how she did it, what she does, how she keeps the, the baby survival rate up. Different things like that. Little tips for you guys that if you're getting into whiptails, um, especially Orium, then uh, you will have a huge head start from a person that really knows what they're talking about. So let's get into that video. All right. Well, again, we're here with Regina and we're at Eric and Regina's fish rooms. And uh, this is Regina, obviously. <laughs> And so uh, we're talking about Ariums today, and they're a type of whip tail. So let's start with the very basics. Um, we're going to talk about breeding these today. Um, so let's start with where do they come from? What's, do you these know the from history South of America. them? South America, yeah. I have no idea what part of South America. I apologize. No, that's all right. Um, they're relatively simple to breed. They just need a larger tank because they're a vertical spawner. Okay. Well, they'll always spawn on the front of the glass. Yeah. Now let's and talk about this tank. So like, thirty gallons, I'm yes, guessing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, driftwood. You always keep driftwood in it. Plants. Like, yes. are these things you must have? Uh, the driftwood is just there because they need something to graze on. Yeah. Um, they also like to be in a vertical position most of the time. They do come down to the bottom of the tank to eat once in a while. Gotcha. But they're mostly on the glass, laying on the plants or laying on the driftwood. Okay. Now, uh, how do you sex them? Very simple. Um, the males will get odontos the sides of their face. You can see the hairs look like whiskers. Okay, yeah, right there below yeah. the eye? Below the eye, yeah. Um, okay. And the female, bottom there. Oh, yeah, so he's got the whiskers as yes. well. Yep. And then the female's down here. The female's down there. Now, uh... Has no odontos. She's, she's got a smooth face. Gotcha. What's the sexual maturity on these? Um, I would think about a year and a half. Okay. Because they're not really a rapid grower. Uh, the fryer come out, they're tiny. They're probably uh, three millimeter, four millimeter. And you actually have some, so we could look at those yeah, in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Okay. And these guys usually spawn once a month. Wow. I feed them with a big variety of food. They'll eat everything from spirulina tablets, uh, pellets. I give them krill. Uh, krill tablets that I pre-moisten. I always wet by pellet food so that it sinks to the bottom instead of yeah. floating around up top because it doesn't benefit them. So if you do that, how long do you wet them for? Like do you just let them soak just, in no, water? It's usually like six hours. They're really oh, wow. hard as a rock and they don't, they don't want to absorb water. And that doesn't affect the food whatsoever? No, no. Some color leaches out of it, but I really don't think it helps hurts the food anyway. Yeah, okay, so now that we're talking about feeding, how often do you feed these guys? These guys get fed twice a day. Okay, twice a day. Yep. And in the morning, they're usually given uh, spirulina, and then in the evening, I usually give them whatever pellet food or frozen food that we have. They like blood worms, frozen blood worms. Okay. Um, the krill pellets, we have live krill, uh, well, frozen krill. Okay. Black worms. I'm, I, I try not to give them too many black worms because I really don't know what that does to their digestive system. Gotcha. Now, how about this? So, like, water parameters, like uh, temperature. Um, let's start with that. Temperature and, like, pH, the different things like that. The temperature of the water in here is 72. The pH is 6.8. Okay. Um, when I do a water change, which is... Where's that little baby rainbow? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can get them. Yeah, I had Moorhead River rainbows in here, and now we found the fry. That is funny. That's Actually, how it always Ron happens. Found the fry. I didn't even. I did see it out. earlier, and I was yeah. like, "Hey, that's a fry!" Yeah. And she's like, like, "No, that's no a way. snail!" And she's like, "Wow, it is a fry!" <laughs> yeah, I thought you were talking about one of these. Yeah. Things. But the water changes whenever I do water changes on this tank once a week. Okay. Um, because it, it, there's a light. And about what, ten percent or? No, no. I take it down almost fifty percent. Oh, that's a monster water change. Yeah. A little more than 50%. And then usually if I let the water go for two weeks without doing a water change, the next thing I know, I've got eggs. So once a month oh, really? when I see the females getting heavy, I just don't do a water change for two weeks, and then that's what happens. I get eggs. Oh, that's awesome. So if you go two weeks without a water yep. change, once a they'll, month, they'll, they'll spawn, they'll spawn yep. for you. And this is the, you said this morning these weren't even here, so this yeah. was like. No, that had to have happened like right before you guys got here. They knew we were coming. That's yeah, what happened. They wanted to show off. 
Oh, that's awesome. And it won't focus, but that's okay. We got a good video of it. Um, so we got temperature, we got water changes. Uh, what's your most important parameter with these guys? So like we talked about what the pH is. I don't know. I've never let the pH on this tank drop lower than 6.8. So okay. I, I really couldn't tell you if it like would benefit no. or hinder whether okay. the pH dropped a lot or... Gotcha. I wouldn't keep them in hard, hard water because I doubt that they would spawn. Yeah. But I've had someone tell me it doesn't matter the pH as long as you keep the water clean. Yeah. So like is your water pretty soft? No, I think the water here comes out at like 7.2. 7.2? It doesn't have a good buffering capacity because it drops. Like overnight it'll be down to 7. Oh, okay. If you let it go. So that means it, pro it probably has a low it, cage. Yeah, right. Okay. And no. if you let it go, the pH drops to down to 3s and 4s and 5s. So. Okay. Let's, look, let's take a look at the babies in here. And uh, what do you feed them? So you feed them, you feed the adults spirulina and yeah. some like different algae pellets right. and stuff like that. And they're done. I know this is actually perfect. Good. Yep. Good. That, yeah, that's perfect. So these babies here are a month and a half old. Oh yeah. And they're only what? I would say they're about an inch, inch and a half. Probably an inch, yeah. Now, how much smaller are they when they're first born? Oh, when they're first born, they're three millimeter. Wow. That's yeah. tiny. Yeah, they're very small, and whenever they first hatch, they don't move around a lot. So you have to feed them constantly and do water changes constantly because if there's a large bacteria load in the water, they'll wipe out immediately. Wow. So when the eggs in there get ready to hatch, I scrape them off with a razor blade into a fishnet, and I take the water from the parent's tank and I put it into three receptacles. I split the eggs up and then I just... Oh, so you spread them into three different yeah, batches just in case something happens. Right. Don't so like, your eggs in one basket. <laughs> if if I got a spawn of these, so like I, I had the parents, I had the babies, mm -hmm. I'd wait until they're getting ready to hatch. I would take them and put them into different containers right. that you said. Um, then what would you suggest from there? Like, what would I exactly have to do to keep those eggs alive? To keep alive? those eggs alive until they hatch, and even beyond that, you must use the water from the parents' tank. So never do dechlorinated yeah, water. Use dechlorinated water. It, it, Just, it alters the pH and everything, the chemistry of the water. I don't have any experience doing that personally. Yeah. But I know if you do a water change like that with dechlorinated tap water right away, the fish wipe out, the fry oh, wipe out. Man. Yeah. So when I get the eggs hatch, I start doing water changes about the fifth day. It takes them about three days to absorb their egg sac. Whenever the third day, they still have a little bit of an egg sac after three days, so I'll just take crushed up spirulina tabs and I crush them up into a oh, yeah. fine powder. Spirulina tabs. And I, they break pretty easily, so I'll snap it in half and take each piece and just crumble it up into the water. Just grind up into a powder into the water. So there it is. Swish it around in their three containers. Yep. So that it sinks to the bottom where it goes past their faces. They mostly cling to the sides of the containers that I keep them in, but they will go down to the bottom to eat. And they will. And then they'll come back up onto the sides. Once they're up onto the sides of the container again, yeah. that's when I take a baster, and this is only on the third day. <coughs> Excuse me. I use a baster to siphon yep. out the crap that's left on the bottom. Okay. And then I use this tank, which is... All of those tank drains. I mean, it's filtered water. It's yeah. uh, tap water, but it's in a cycle tank. Yep. And I put a whatever I take out when the baser, I put back in with that. Okay. So if I take a baser full of water out of their tank, I take a baser full of water out of there and put it. Back and not the parents' tank. Not the parents' tank. Okay, so it's a different tank. It's cycled like like water. Yeah. Okay. But it's seasoned water. And then once the fry get. To that fourth day, I have to feed them more often, and I actually keep them whenever. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we'll turn on the light now. Yeah, this is one of the fancy containers I put. <laughs> nice. In. And the only reason I do that is because there's a wide mouth. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. And the food will sink down here. The fire will go down here and eat. It's easier for me to siphon it off. Oh yeah, because it's smaller. Turn up here. And this does get a biofilm on it that they eat. Yeah, and then they can eat off the. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, my wife would probably kill me if yeah. I if I use one of her kitchen things. So you gotta make sure not to steal them from your yep, wife. Yep. Get your own. Exactly. And I use this as well. Okay. And it's just you know another container, and then I use my fancy. Oh, is that your my Christmas? Fancy container here. Oh, nice. How about that? Yeah. That's now, which one do you have the best success in? This one. <laughs> Maybe oh, isn't like that funny? Color, I like the color scheme of it. I don't. I don't oh know. yeah. Oh, that is funny. So that's that's day four, right? Yep. Day four. And then so, once they're in these containers. Yep. After day four, I have to feed them quite a bit. So I take my spirulina tablets. Yep. And I crush it up into the water. And then I just do water changes. Okay, so how many times a day would you recommend feeding that spirulina? Well, they have to be fed almost constantly. They have to constantly have food. Wow. Which is another reason to have the airline with the air stand in there. Okay. So it circulates the food up around the fish. And I have the, the air stone on relatively high. And I feed them. So I get up at 6.30 in the morning every day. Wow. These and lights down here come on at 8. That's crazy. So at 8.30... The fish get fed, the fry get fed. Yep. At 9.30, I come down here and I do a water change. And I change half of the water out, and I dump it into a bucket. And this is every morning? Every morning. I just dump it into a bucket okay. so that I don't flush out any fry. I and again, half the of the water dumped the water. out into the bucket. Half the water out. Keep the bucket because if a fry gets in there, I just siphon it out with yep. a taster. Better than dumping it straight into the sink. Exactly. For sure. And then I take the water out of there, top this off, and put it back. When I do all three containers, I feed them again. Okay. Um, usually there's a lot of mold at the bottom. Yeah. So I'll take my fingers and just try to like loosen it up so that it floats out. Okay. They actually do eat that and they can't eat it as far as I know. They they say it's got a high bacterial load on it, but okay. I've never had a problem with leaving a little bit of mold in the tank with them. Okay. So I do that for about a month and then they go in here. So let me recap. So. Just so I know that we're, we're both on the same page, everyone watching is on the same page. Yep. You get the babies, um, for the first three days, they're gonna be in the, in the container, yep. more yep. or less. Oh and no, they you, stay in these containers. Yeah, they stay in there for a month. The, for the first yeah. three days is the yeah. most crucial right. though. Right, right, right. And you feed them one little tiny one pellet little a tiny, day. Tiny piece of pellet, I mean, it's not even that much. And again, when, when they're that little, that first couple of days, okay. Yep. Just so a nice fine powder. Quarter, quarter of that pellet. And you do Sarah, or uh -huh. Sarah, yep. I don't know how to say it. Sarah. Sarah, okay, mm -hmm. so you do Sarah. And so for the first three days, you feed them once per day, mm -hmm. and then you do like really small water changes yep. from the parents' water. Yep. Right. And then after the third day, once they start getting yep. on the sides of yep. the tank and all that, yeah. then you start feeding them constantly. Constantly, yep. In the mornings, you do a 50% yep. water change. Yep. With cycled water, it doesn't right. have to be from the parents' exactly. tank, it could just be cycled uh, water. Cycled water. 50% water change, and you feed them constantly. Yep. So, if, if say, the person watching um, has these, and they have a job, mm -hmm. so they would wake up in the morning, feed them, yep. and then when they get home, they feed them again, mm -hmm. and then maybe before bed, so right. three times? Right. If I feed them before I go to bed, the lights go off around 9.30, 10 o'clock. Okay. If I feed them before I go to bed, I'll come down here at 8.30 and feed them. And I'll come back at nine, dump the water out, and do a fifty percent water. Oh, so if you feed them before bed, then you'll do yeah. the water change before yeah. Yeah. you go to bed. Yeah, I want them to be in cleaner water overnight. Overnight, okay. I made that, mistake that makes once. perfect sense. Yeah, I made that mistake once where I just fed them and left them go, and the next morning there were like ten or twelve fish that were dead. Okay. In the containers. So. Between the three. So again, you wake up in the morning, you feed them, yep. you let them eat, yep. and then you do the fifty percent water yep. change. And then, do you feed them at all the rest oh, yeah, of the day? The rest of the day, yeah, but it's more like every plus every three hours. Every three hours, yeah. just a tiny amount. Here, yep. And, and then, just a quarter of a tablet. Okay. Squash That's it. Squash it up in your hand. You can even have little, you know, little pebbles there. This stuff's pretty soft. But every single one of my fish loves this food, so. Yeah. And how much does that normally cost, just out of curiosity? That top right there? Yeah. Is it expensive or is it cheap? Really is it like really? 80 bucks for that, I think. Oh my oh, gosh. But how long yeah, will this last? Yeah. That'll yeah. last me forever. Yeah. I mean, I do feed it to everybody, but yeah. there's, I mean, I don't even know how many tablets are in there. There's there's tons of tablets in there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and there's, they're that easy. Yeah. Let me feel one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those they're are really nice. Easy to break, really easy to crumble. Okay. 
Well, here's here's the last <coughs> question. Me. So I feel like anyone watching this video could probably breed these pretty well, and I appreciate you for the, for sharing that. Right. I think that if you if you have those types of fish, if you give them a berry diet, I don't stick to just green or you know yeah. meat or whatever. They love rapashi, uh, pellet foods. I pre-soak all my pellet foods that sinks to the bottom right away. That's very interesting. Yep. I love that. I mean, Eric says I'm not supposed to do that, but I don't it care. It works. It works. Yeah. My fish like it. They're not surface, so why the hell should I let that stuff bobble around? Yeah. So, maintain your water. And they have to be, obviously, sexually mature. With uh, any of yeah. these whiptails, they have to have the odontos. It's not any of them. It has to have the odontos on the side, and that's when you know the male has reached sexual maturity. Yeah. So the female, when she gets heavy, just do a water change and then feed them up real good. Don't do a water change for about a month. Yeah. They lay eggs on the side of the glass all the awesome. time. And you guys do... Sell these, correct? Oh, yeah. So yeah. if someone wants to get these, they can come to you and yeah. they can get the exact strain. Yeah. And so after watching this video, they can get yeah. the same fish and know exactly how to breed them. Right. And that's awesome. Now, how old are they normally when you sell them? Just out of curiosity. Uh, about an inch, inch and a half. So this is getting yeah. close to sellable yeah. size. Yeah. And uh, and we'll link your uh, email down below, okay. and Great. people can get a hold of you that way. Great. And uh, most likely you'll probably deal with Eric. Yeah. And uh, and Eric's extremely knowledgeable as well yeah. and so uh yeah if you guys are interested in breeding those regina thank you so much You're for sharing welcome. that knowledge You're i, I really do appreciate Great it having you. Thanks. yep have a good one you too